Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. It's another beautiful fall morning with Autumn. We've been potty training her a little bit where if she stands up from a long nap, we can put her outside and she'll tinkle. If she just had a bottle, we can put her down outside and she will tinkle. So we have been able to predict when she's going to go potty and bring her outside most of the time. I do have to wash her towel in her box every once in a while because sometimes she just doesn't get there in time. Mm. But most of the time she ends up tinkling on the floor when she's running around with the boys. Not technically running, but she is walking a lot with the boys during the day and it's been working out really well. Taking her out to visit with her four-legged brothers in the morning and getting that social time for goat socialization and then spending the rest of the time being spoiled rotten. Being spoiled rotten. And she cries for us. She cries for us more than she does her brothers, but she also cries for her brothers when she's out here with them. So I know that she's getting the perfect balance of socialization all around. Girls, why are you stealing the pregnant girl's last of her food? You finished yours and you have to go for the slow eater's food. I think it was heart. Somebody over here was purring like um, Autumn does. Were you purring? Somebody was over here making that noise that Autumn makes all the time. Oh, it's you! Her mama makes that noise. Well, go figure. Now we know where she gets it from. I'm gonna put Autumn down out here with her brothers for a little bit of free play time. And then I'm gonna get some things done here in the barn and the garden before I head back to the house. So I'm not gonna turn on the electric fence yet. So, <laughs> electric fence, huh? If it doesn't work, it's no good. If it works, it's amazing. Go play with your brothers. Go play. Or pee. <laughs> As you can tell, she pees a lot. I just woke her up, so she's peeing. The peeing a lot is a great sign that she's getting plenty of bottles. Her urine is clear instead of dark yellow, so I know she's fully hydrated. <laughs> what are you gonna do? Whoop. You're just gonna lay down, aren't you? You like laying in the sun, I think. Because in the house, you don't lay down as quick. You walk around a bit. Hi, baby. Hi, baby. Hi. <laughs> I think she knows who Mama is. I think she does. And she lies down. Brothers, your sister's laying down again. All three of them have lost their umbilical cord now. Oh wait, no, Cordy still got his. I thought, I thought it was gone, but he's got a little bit left. So they're growing up. Aww. Anybody guess who that is? Anybody know whose body that is? That's Hearts. That's Hearts looking mighty fine compared to what she was like earlier this year. I am super happy we've gotten her back into good health. I am still not seeing any signs of an udder on Rosemary. She is so big and round, but she always has been. So it's so hard to tell if she's bred. I really need to get an ultrasound machine. We have a trade in the works for little Luna. She is hopefully going to be going to live on a Nigerian dwarf farm because we cannot find a buck to breed her with. It's just kind of pointless to keep her in our herd as just a loving pet as much as we love our Luna carrots she's gonna have to go somewhere where she's fits in a little bit better to the herd I tell you what it is so hard to part what I gotta go she's like don't leave mama play with your brothers I gotta do some stuff hopefully she won't get stepped on that's always my big fear with leaving her out here for even a minute unattended 
but she's definitely got more strength to her now, so hopefully that will keep her. And look at this. I left my buck pen open. I gave them an extra flake of hay after I let the girls out because they had already eaten all of their hay that quick. I always bring the boys out first and then the girls. Anyway, so silly me. It's a good thing they're such good boys and so involved in that hay. Get that gate latched. We don't need any escapes. I showed you guys Ryan bush hogged over here so let's go let's go around that way so he bush hogged all of this um okay she's fine I hear the baby crying I have to stop he bush hogged all the way through here and oh that's such a sad sight but oh the realities of farm life it, it could have been far worse so anyway we will keep moving <laughs> he bush hogged along this side look at all the crawfish that's fresh too it's wet i saw there's another one over there anyway um i gotta get all this black plastic that he chopped up that was from the days when we used to get pulp from the organic juice pulp company and uh, we stopped doing that because we were afraid it might be contributing to the illnesses we had last year. But now I'm pretty sure it was not that. I actually suspect it was the chaffe that was killing our goats. Anyway, so he cut back through here all the way because he said he wanted to open up the sunlight on this side of the barn because this stall right here this only stall on this side of the barn has been staying much more damp than the others so he was hoping the sunlight would help and i think it is so another reason why he wanted to bush hog is because we're trying to look at where we're going to put this back fence we're thinking we might put it from the corner of the barn out i want to include this um willow inside the garden area so probably a fence post somewhere in here going to that corner or we might just take it straight that way alongside of the barn still haven't decided but a fence post right about here as our corner because i want to include all of this area i want to come along this blackberry bramble with the fence this area here where the black plastic and weed piles are will be cleaned up and this is where we'll plant our big fruit trees all along this edge of the vegetable garden. So some of the things that we've planted in this section may end up here as transplants later on. I've had some of you ask about horseradish and I'm really bad at remembering things. So I need to know who all did I have an actual conversation with saying, I will give you some horseradish. I will sell you some, send you some, trade you some, whatever it might have been. I'm trying to remember who it was. We're at the point now that this is a good time of year to dig up. So we're going to be digging up and separating roots for replanting and for using for food. Goats are gonna love when they discover that after they're done devouring their hay and come over here on this end. They'll find a special treat of cucumbers. Cucumbers were so full of the worms that the fruit were all damaged, all ruined. So 
and it's the time of year that those things are done anyway still got some squash coming on as you can see there are some damage hmm what could have done that oh i don't know maybe the same thing that ate my turnip greens and rutabaga greens don't worry those will bounce back and these are at the end of their season anyway yeah you guessed it the fence charger failed again we had an issue with the goats getting out so now we know for sure our fence charger is but there's good news check out how well the strawberries are doing amazing <laughs> they're even trying to fruit but we're getting some great grass weeds in there so i'm gonna have to take this cover off this weekend pull all those weeds out and get some of that mulch over there on this bed can you see that <laughs> there's a zinnia How cute is that? A little zinnia popped up underneath the frost fabric and is doing quite well. So you see everything is doing really well in here. It's growing good. So we're happy about that. These strawberries are trying to put on some winter fruit, which is hilarious. But the weeds are definitely coming in. This is all um, edible weeds. What is it? What is it? Come on, Rose, where's your brain? Henbit? Or, um, purple dead nettle. And then there's chickweed seedlings coming in. We actually allow these two in our gardens in the winter quite often because we want the pollinators to come. Once we have our fence up, around the garden to make sure that no deer will come in and eat our new fruit we'll take this cover off and allow it to get used to the cold and with that layer of mulch that'll help and let some of these beneficial winter weeds survive that's different than most people we allow some weeds to grow in our garden I don't like all those weeds that were growing this summer. That's something I do not want to do. I would like to keep my chickweed in this area for the winter. Having a bed of chickweed is better than having a bed of other weeds. So if the chickweed outcompetes the worst weeds, then we're winning. I can't wait to see which one of these carrots survived because this is what is left of our carrots. So whatever carrot this is, it's more heat tolerant. I have got to get in here and harvest some of these radish for dinner one of these nights. We're trying to leave the peanuts in the ground as long as possible because the one sample plant I pulled up, they were not fully developed. So unfortunately that may not be a thing I get to enjoy this year, but next year I definitely will. The sugar cane, we're letting grow as long as the cold weather holds off. We'll probably replant most of it and make this bed sugarcane through here. We need a lot more sugarcane than what we grew this year to amount to anything. If anybody has any tips on how to process sugarcane into sugarcane syrup, into cane syrup, without having one of those big thing that presses the cane like um deep south homestead has <sighs> what do you do if you don't have one of those i'm like struggling with that because i can't get one of those big machines just for a small crop of sugar cane but i really want sugar cane syrup so any advice let me know All right, I got that all prepped. I have thickenings that have been waiting for me to get into some soil. I've got them rooted in jars. I've got them stored in my fridge. I got fig cuttings everywhere. So we're gonna get a good amount of figs started through the winter and be able to plant them out in the spring. 
keeping a close eye on the elderberry, waiting to see the leaves start to drop. We've got our giant, huge, very prolific blooms and buried elderberry over there. This is one of its offspring and we're waiting to watch for the leaves to drop so that we can do cuttings. If I promised you cuttings, um, please remind me, send me an email, send me a Facebook message, remind me if I had already promised you some with a barter, a trade, or a sale, or I just said you could have some, let me know. For those of you interested in purchasing some, I will make a special announcement when I have everybody else that was already promised figured out. Don't worry, I have plenty. That, that elderberry tree goes from the pond all the way to the fence. Very, very prolific. And the cuttings that we took this spring have been amazing. If you got one of our cuttings and it was successful, please leave a comment down below. Let us know how it's doing. If you got some of our cuttings and you weren't successful, let me know. I will send you more if you can pay the shipping. I won't charge you again. So let me know. Cuttings, rooting cuttings can seem like a very easy task to somebody like me who's been gardening their whole life. But I know that it can be a little bit more tricky for other people. So if you did try and fail, let me know. I will replace them. I just can't afford to do all the shipping costs. So I hope you understand that they'll be replaced if you pay the shipping. But if you had success, I really want to hear about it. Um, you can go to my Wholesome Roots Farmstead Friends Facebook group and post pictures of them. That'll make my day. I'm, and if you're on Instagram, you can post them on Instagram and tag me. That'll really make my day too. forward I want to do more videos on quail we are really getting into this quail thing and with us hatching out three different varieties of purebred quail from the incubators they're probably gonna be due around November 4th I think it was when I looked at the calendar to hatch and I would like to know if you guys would be interested in a series about quail um, maybe doing like a comparison of those three different breeds. We're gonna have the Jumbo Meat Maker Katrunix, we're gonna have the Fab Feral, which is the fairy quail, and we're gonna have the A&M um, Pure White quail. So it'll be really interesting to see what it's like to do these purebred quail. We have these chicken houses that we were able to get for free. Um, we're going to probably do a breeding trio of each in that one and have a male and female and two females for each one of the breeds that we got. That way we can have hatching eggs ready to go and whenever we need to hatch more than that if or if we have a request for eggs we can divide them up into these sections but we'll have you know all whites all jumbos, all fairy in each one of the sections once we get it all cleaned up, of course.
And now for the good news about the fence charger. I think that'll be the last time these goats get out. Because yesterday we received an amazing package at our post office box. One of our very, very beloved subscribers was very kind and generous and thoughtful and they helped us out a lot more than they realize I think. They've been helping us out a lot. They've been very kind and generous. So anyway, without further ado, meet our new solar charger. This thing is so powerful. The package said that it had to charge for three days before it would work. Ryan was getting zapped last night when he set it up. So he zapped himself and he watched hearts get zapped. Unfortunately, poor little hearts. But she is my most curious nosy little goat. So she got it first and then fancy girl. I'm like, why my favorites? <laughs> so the rest of the goats have been staying away from the fence. I think they're a little bit smarter maybe. <laughs> they know by watching another goat get shocked that it's hot. So I'm hoping that all the goats learn it pretty quick because it is hot. It is a very good fence charger. It is designed for, I think it's a four joules. 0.4 joules, is that how it works? Anyway, Ryan knows all the specific stuff. I don't see any of the specific stuff on here. So I'm not gonna turn this on right now because I gotta go get Autumn back. And I was hoping that she'd get up and play with her brothers today. Every day she seems like she gets a little bit better, but every day she seems to get just a little bit better. Um, today she had a really good poop all on her own without any encouragement so that made me like cheer and clap so her improvements are small very small and gradual but they're still improvements and there's nothing getting worse so if her legs were too cramped during the time that she spent in the womb with her brothers or if they atrophied too far from that first week of mom not giving her enough milk then she, I, I, I don't know. I don't know if she's gonna like just all of a sudden bounce back or if it's gonna be a very gradual thing or if she'll always be stiff legged. But no matter what the outcome, she's surviving, she's thriving, she's eating, she's gaining weight, she's doing all those other things that are extremely important. So we're gonna keep babying her and loving her and getting her better and better every day. You see mommy? <laughs> you see your mommy. There you go, stretch out those legs. Laying down like that all the time is not good for you. You gotta exercise. Come on girl. Gee. <laughs> Laying in that same position that whole time makes your legs stiff too, honey. You need to stretch it out. Give it a good walk. Come on, Autumn. Guys, I swear she's more graceful inside, which is funny because we have hardwood floors which are kind of slick. Hey, baby Harvest. Hey, baby. You're starting to get buds on your horns. I'm gonna have to disbud you now. I was waiting to feel them. Now they're starting to come in. I always wait till the horns start to come in a little bit so that I know where to go. They seem to work better that way. What? What? Corny's over here nibbling on me. And Autumn just walked all that way. She walked all the way from there to there and I didn't have the camera on her. <laughs> You silly girl, you're camera shy. Is that what it is? So I'm all about setting intentions and goals and believing that they're gonna come to fruition. But I'm also aware that you need to speak them out loud. 
tell people what your goals are and that helps give them more power. So, I'm gonna tell you guys my goal right now. I looked at Social Blade's projections for when I would reach 10,000 subscribers. And it says that it will be March. I think we can do better than that, don't you? I say that I can get there by January 1st with a little extra effort and some extra collaborations and some help from you guys. I have been saving items for a while now that I have been wanting to do a giveaway for, but I haven't really had the attention to give to it to set up a real giveaway. So my intention now is to get to 10,000 by January 1st and I'm gonna have a prize package. It's gonna have stuff about goats, it's gonna have stuff about gardening. We'll see what else we can add to it. I'll definitely put some feelers out to maybe get some donations from some companies to add to the package as well. So let me know if you guys have any ideas for collaborations that you think would be amazing with the Homestead community. And let me know if you have any ideas on ways in which I can gain those extra subscribers between now and January 1st. Because I think I can do it. I know I can do it. I just have to put the efforts into motion to make it happen. This is one of my favorite sights to see. Giant full-size kids still nursing on their moms. You know that's a good mom when she lets the big kids still nurse. Daddy, you're so big. You're so big. Wow, I think this is gonna be a long vlog. I apologize. I had a lot of things I wanted to talk about today. And I really enjoyed filming you today. For some reason, it just seemed more like I was ready to talk, you know? Ready to talk about things. I don't know if you guys understand what I'm saying, but hopefully you do. This little baby is gonna be ready for her bottle now. And the boys are gonna be ready for their lunch. So, Thank you guys for watching. You know the drill. We'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots.